Question of the day. When have your expectations been completely subverted? And no, I'm not talking about episode eight. I'm talking about in a good way or a bad way, you had expectations when you read a rule book or when you looked at a game, and yet now that you're playing the game, whoa, this is so much better, or oh, this is so much worse than I thought it was going to be, right? A little buyer's remorse, or man, I'm so glad I found this game. Which brings us to the topic we're talking about today, which is Agizia Shifting Sands. This is a redo of an older version of Agizia, but this is from Stronghold Games. We're going to be taking a look at how this one plays. It's a worker placement, more worker flow sort of game where you're going to be placing your workers along the river to build these five different things along the Nile in Egypt, the, the Sphinx, the, para, the, the Sphinx, the Pyramids, the Colonnade, the Obelisk, and different statues. You're going to be building all those sort of things for points. Let's take a look at how Agizia plays. We'll come back out to talk final thoughts right now. So Agizia, Shifting Sands, what is it, how does it play? Let's take a look right now. Just like this, here's the setup of the game. Everyone will start with one of their colored token bricks up here on the grain market, the stone market, and on the victory point track, which you'll be able to see. Actually, let me tip it up this way just a touch. The victory point track up at the top, you really can't see it, but uh, it's not that necessary. Here's the board itself. So it is a worker placement game essentially in which you're gonna be placing your boats down the Nile River. Now, just like in real life, you can't without a power boat go up river. So you're gonna take your boats and start them up here and then you're gonna be placing them as the river flows down. Now, if you end up placing down here, you could not place another action above it because gravity and such. So what's gonna happen is on your turn in turn order randomly at first and then it'll be determined by who's last place uh, you're also going to get some stones we'll talk about this and some workers over here in just a minute but just know that you do get a little player board to track your stone and your workers and when i say workers are your crew i don't mean your actual boats in the worker placement sense i mean you have a crew of people that are allowed to build as much as the stone as you have etc and we'll talk about how that works there are two things to note these are printed onto the board for the first round in rounds two three four and five these are actual tiles that will be shuffled up and mixed around and the order will change. I'll go through what each of these types of things does in just a minute, but you can either take an action on the right hand side, which would be take one of these cards or an action on the left hand side. You are going to be trying to build bricks onto the obelisk, the colonnade area, the statues, the pyramid, and last but not least, the Sphinx. Everyone will get two of these Sphinx cards, and these are things that are basically just goals at the end of the game. You get eight points if you've completely built the colonnade and have at least four bricks in the pyramid. The way that works is you'll notice this space, this space, and this space down here are the building spaces. You're going to put a boat here, and you build from out to end. So the first one there will get to build first. Uh, there are actually a couple bonuses that will be on here that will change each game. There'll be a bonus that is just kind of a permanent bonus, and then this one is something you can spend every round by flipping your token to show that you've done it. There are a lot of those different tokens, and I'll show you what some of those are right now. Some of them will allow you to place a boat and um, uh, further up the river as opposed to down the river and things. There are all kinds of cool little bonuses. At the end of every round, you can add an additional strength to your crew. That's the one that lets you place up river one time. So there are a lot of things to really make your game a little bit more powerful with just those bonuses. Now, as far as building itself, now you're going to have a set amount of stone, by, and you're also going to have these little crew members, and you're going to lay them out on the board. You don't spin them in the sense that you, let's just say you had one on three, and if you wanted to spend three, work you wouldn't spend it you would just flip it over to show that you've spent that power so you can always increase your crew but you can't decrease it you're then going to keep track of how many stones you have uh, by putting a stone on this board so let's just say i have eight stones now this building spot counts for the colonnades and the obelisk this building spot counts for the pyramid and the statues and this one down here counts for the sphinx Way, the way this is going to work is these statues will be random each game too there's an a a b and then an a or b here you're going to place your workers out and you're going to take things like grain and stone. This one allows you to move up on each of these markets and they have little bonuses as you move up. This one allows you to move your green and yellow crew up a power. This is a purple up a power. The purple one's interesting because you can only use your purple one with your other three, but uh, they start off on two power versus one power. This is the building spot. This is the power. We know this. Uh, building spot. This is gather two stone or move up a power. This is move up a power here or move the uh, ring 
that'd be your irrigation rain. Your notice the different colors here of these places. For instance, this one is a red field. It will only produce during the producing phase, the field feeding phase, if the ring is on this space. If it's not on that space, only the green and yellow will produce. If it's on this space, only the green fields are produced. You also start with a beginner field, which is um, a beginner field and a beginner quarry, which means at the very beginning of the game, you're always going to produce six grain, three stones. So you always have these with you. The way that's going to work is, and again, I'll talk about building in just a second. I know I mentioned it a second ago, but we're going to get back to it. The feeding phase, you have to feed your workers based on how much crew strength you have. So if you have a total of eight crew strength, you would need to produce eight grain. If you're up on the higher on the track there, you can trade in your grain that's extra for points, but only if you're at the very top spot here. The... Uh, the crew is fed that way. You produce the amount of stone that your quarries produce. You'll start with the sum and then produce, let's say, one, two, three. You can get more of these, as you see, and more quarries and more fields to produce more grain and to produce more stone. If you ever can't feed your workers, it's minus victory points depending where you are on the grain market. So it could get better uh, if you move a little higher. Now, when you build, so this space here works for both of these. The way that works is you total up the total amount of strength and stone that you're going to have to build to put as many bricks as you can afford out there. So it's not each time you do this, but if you say, I don't want to build one, one plus two is four, plus two is six, and then plus one is seven. If you have seven amount of strength over here, you know, three and four or four, two and one or something like that, you could then flip those over to show you spent them, spend that amount of bricks, put the bricks out where they go, which in this case would be one, one, here, here, and here. You would then take seven victory points because you get a victory point per stone that you spend. And then since you cross this one, you'll now have access to that bonus. This one allows you to move up on the stone or grain market one time. Now it's not once per brick, it's once per build. So even if I did this, it would not be two times, it would just be once per build. So that's how you build up there. When you wanna build down here at the pyramid, it's the same way. It's a collection of the amount of bricks that you wanna build plus the amount of strength that you wanna spend. So here's why that's important because you may run out of strength up here and go and brick up here and go, well, I can't build down here after all. If all these spaces are blocked, one, two, three, someone could put a prospective buildership here, which means if someone's not able to build, they will get to build last instead, which is pretty nice. So the statues are just essentially um, bonuses if you have a certain level. Think more like uh, wingspan, right? So if I have collected Sphinx cards, so if I have four Sphinx cards here, I would get a point if I built here. I'm sorry, I would get two points if I built here. If I build here and I have five Sphinx cards, I would get five points. If I built here and have six, I would have 10 points. Same thing here, if you're green field productions, and this one's your blocks in the pyramid, so your bricks in the pyramid. So if I have six bricks in the pyramid and I've built there, I would get 10 points. Building the pyramids the same way, you just essentially have to build like a pyramid. You couldn't build here until this one has a base under it, so I could then build here. You'll get a bonus every time a row is completed. Whoever completes it will score as many points as bricks as they have in that row. At the end of the game, the person who has the most points, or the most bricks in the pyramid scores five points. Up here, the person who has the most bricks in the colonnade scores five points. When you want to build Sphinx cards, however many you're allowed to buy, so if you go here first, you can buy up to five Sphinx cards, which means one, two, three, four, five stone and five workers, and you choose one of these to keep. So you're basically buying options to look at to hope that you like one of these cards to build towards. So it does make it a little bit harder to get Sphinx cards, which, whichever one you keep, you keep, and then you get victory points for the rest that you bought. So a point per the rest. So if you bought five, you would get four points if you chose to keep one. So. That is how you play Agizia. You're going to do that five rounds. So that is Agizia. First of all, I love this game. I think it's a fantastic experience top to bottom. Art, let's talk there first. This is the only place that's a little bit weak. It's a pretty bland looking board. I mean, it's just a top down view of the Nile. There are the different things you're building. That looks cool. At least you're putting your bricks onto the actual things on the board. I do like that fact that there's actual building up or building out for the pyramid with the brick tokens that you have. So that's a positive. As far as everything else, though, it's just, you know, it's a pretty basic player board. It's pretty basic tokens and things like that. I do like the little wooden ships and the wooden brick tokens. 
tokens. Those are nice to be able to put out there on the board, but it does look very dry euro when you first take a look at this. And that may be right up your alley and it may be something that turns you off, but do not let that turn you off from the game experience because Agizia Shifting Sands is one of the best euros I've played in years. It is a phenomenal experience. Let's talk worker flow, how this works, player flow. So on your turn, as you saw earlier, you're gonna be placing those ships out. I love the flow of that to where you have to make those crucial decisions. Do I wanna place upriver and get this better action while possibly missing out on selling or do I want to go straight to the selling area because I need to be the first one that sells because otherwise the price is going to go up too much for the bricks, right? The game this reminds me of uh, a little bit, and you, some of you will agree and disagree on this, is Pillars of the Earth. You say, well, how's it like Pillars of the Earth? Well, in Pillars of the Earth, you're taking certain things that you set yourself up for during the round, and you're trading those for action, uh, for victory points at the end of the round. This, you're setting yourself up to get bricks and raise your worker count so that your workers can produce more stone because stone is basically not only a currency, but it's also victory points for every stone you spend on any of the five things you gain victory points points on. So if you have a round where you're able to put 17 worth of bricks out, whether that's nine and six, or I'm sorry, nine and eight, twice in a row, two turns in a row, that's a lot of points just from building twice. So it really is nice, those decision-making things that you have to come up with, right? Do I, do I build up river and skip the stuff down river because someone's going to get there first? Or do I race to the end to try to get the better actions, even though I know that I'm not going to get to build possibly at all, or you know, possibly very much? Uh, so really great decision-making push and pull. This is great at any player count. I like it better at a higher player count because there's a little bit more of that push and pull, but there are also more building spaces as you saw. Um, as far as the actual... Um, as far as the actual cards and things themselves, that is another thing that sets this game apart. I love the fact that there's a variety when it comes to every time you play this game, it's going to be different because the cards you shuffle out there are going to be possibly different. They're going to be in a different order. The action tiles are going to be out there in a different order every round. The, the bonuses for the colonnades are different every time you play. The statues are different every time you play. So there are a lot of different options to where I feel this is one of those games you could play forever and never need an expansion for. It's that solid of a base game by itself. It just has so many great options that every time you play it, you're building towards slightly different goals, even though they're pretty much the same, with slightly different powers, even though they're pretty similar, but the actions themselves are really fun to play towards. There's the push and pull dynamic of, do I wanna mess with this person's uh, um, agricultural thing by shifting the irrigation symbol all the way out of where they won't get any grain this round to make them lose some victory points. I love the idea that if you get your grain market high enough, you're able to sell off your excess grain for victory points. It's another great way to earn just a few points at a time, just constantly rolling the points. So all in all, top to bottom, not the prettiest game in the world. It's not bad looking. It's just not the most like, whoa, that looks like scythe on the table, right? But it's one of the most fun euros because it's such a brain burning puzzle. Every time you play this game, it's going to be a different experience slightly, but you're also, you have to think and make crucial decisions every single action matters that you do and i think that's phenomenal um, really 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 love this game go check out agizia shifting sands from stronghold here in the states it is just an absolute blast i loved love love this game so go get it it's staying in the collection permanently for a long time this is one of those ones we're going to just pull out and play pretty often so uh great at multiple player counts agizia shifting sands fantastic game. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram at Dice Tower Brian. Uh, for all the videos that you see here, they're all, there's a playlist down in the bottom where you can see all my 275 or so reviews on the Dice Tower. Until next time, we'll see ya. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.